Okay, more cooling system progress. I have now got the water pump off. Actually doesn't look that horrendous inside, so maybe I shouldn't have bothered. I mean, it looks a bit rusty, but it's certainly not bad. But never mind, done it now. Anyway, good news is that where the water pump was, the broken bolt is actually sticking out of the head. It hasn't sheared on the entrance to the head. So, there might still be a chance that I can get it out without needing to take the engine out of the car. Okay, so I am now going to go and tackle, try and see if I can get that bolt out. What I'm going to do is thread two nuts onto it and then kind of clamp them up against each other and then use the back one then as essentially a grip to try and reverse the nut out or the bolt thread out of the head. So I have squirted it with Bulldog BDX several times yesterday, so hopefully some of that has penetrated in. And uh, I'm going to give it a go. Mm. Wish me luck. Well, so you can now see there's my broken bolt. Um, there is this kind of alternator bracket thing in the way. So I'm going to um, undo all that, get the alternator slightly out of the way. Uh, just give me a little bit more access first. If I can actually get a nut onto this thread at all to start with. Yeah. There's definitely some threads happening there. They're very skanky and dirty, so I might just get a little wire brush or something and clean those up. Okay, that's definitely looking a bit better. I can see some metal in the threads. That's good. Okay, right, that's a bit cleaned up. It's not perfect, but hopefully it'll do. Let's see if we can thread this nut on it now then. Okay, it's quite tight. Hopefully with a ratchet, we'll get that moving. Let's see, it's going on quite nicely. Just need enough clearance for the front nut to go on. Okay, second nut. Threading on. Okay, so now what we need to do is get two spanners and kind of clamp these down against each other. So I'll use that one on the rear one. This one on the front one. And let's do some clamping. Serious clamping here. Okay. Right, those are clamped against each other. So now, oh, they're actually lined up quite nicely as well, but if we go on the inner one and try turning, see if we can turn the bolt. Well, something's happening. Is it the bolt that is turning out of the head or is it the two nuts that are having a lovely time I'm doing? I don't know. Should we carry on and find out? Oh, it's just too, I can't cope. I think we have success, you know? I think I can see some new threads happening and this is getting further away from the engine block. <gasps> oh my days. This is too much for me to bear. Come on. Oh, yes, I think this is working, guys. I'm so happy. All right, let's see if we can get the ratchet on there. Let me do it a bit more quickly. Have I got it the right way around? Or not? Hand stuck. Uh, yeah. Come on, Bolt. You know you want to get out of that engine block. Oh yes, oh yes, woohoo! Thank goodness for that. That has saved me a whole world of pain. Yay! Yay! Okay, that was ridiculous, but Matt Richardson did it first. Um, yay, I'm really happy that bolt came out. Um, so I don't think I might need to have to take the engine out just to get that bolt out. I mean, there may be a reason, another reason in the future why I might need to take the engine out, who knows, but one stuck bolt is not it. 
So that's such good news, I'm really happy. So now that means I can get on and finish off the cooling system work, um, put a new, fit the new water pump, uh, fit the new lines and hoses, and the new radiator. And let me give you an update on the new radiator as well. I have just uh, been able to unscrew both the uh, switch out of the thermostat housing and then taken the thermostat housing off to reveal a very crusty looking thermostat. So I'm very glad that's being replaced. Let's get that and the gasket off, shall we? Yeah. That is a skanky thermostat. I'll get a, a little blade and just gently clean the gasket off. And then I'm gonna flush the engine uh, with a lot of water and see if we can just make sure it's all really nice and clean inside. Okay, I have uh, now got the cooling system kind of stripped back completely. Uh, cleaned up the thermostat housing. I've flushed uh, loads of water down uh, into the thermostat housing and let it kind of flow around the engine so until nice clean water came out the other end. So I think we're now ready to commence reassembly. Okay, I'll put the thermostat in first, just to kind of close up that gaping hole on the top of the engine in case I drop something down it. Looked like the little um, hole in the thermostat was kind of over there in the original one, so I'll stick with it on this one. I'm just in the um, packet uh, with the thermostat, there's a load of gaskets, I just need to fish out the correct one for this. Right, I have um, put a bit of smear of silicon on the gasket for the um, uh, thermostat cover. I still have no idea, after years and years of working on cars, whether that's what you're supposed to do or not, but I work on the basis that um, I've done it before and it's generally served me well. Also, these are old parts that are likely to have, you know, small scratches or bits of rust and that kind of thing in them. So a little bit of silicon just helps uh, keep a seal. So let's put the top on. Just give a little smear, not too much. Just enough so that they uh, come out easily again if we need to take them out. These are 13, so I'm just going to do them in by hand. They're nice and tight, just going to go and have a look at the torque settings. Well, I've had a look at the Haynes manual torque settings and uh, it's just under 20 newton meters and my um, torque wrench doesn't even start till 20. So I'm going to go, with, I'll just tighten it until it's a little bit tighter by hand and call it a day. Just till it's kind of snug. I'd call that. That's done. I'm happy with that. Okay, uh, next is the um, fan switch. Ooh, actually, threads are a bit unpleasant. I'll put a touch of copper grease on that as well. And it was really stuck in the uh, old one. So, um, yeah, it's really good that it gets a little bit of copper grease on it. Try again. Okay, I shall get my um, I shall get my gigantic spanner and tighten that down. This is twenty nine millimeters. This I have actually bought a socket that's the right size, but it's a twelve point socket, which means that it'll kind of grip at the corners, and it might just mangle the corners very slightly. So I'll gently use a big old wrench crush the washer. That's as tight as I can get it. Lovely. Right, next is to do the same with the water pump. I've just been to a tool station to buy some new bolts for the water pump. Um, the old ones are marked, if you can see, 8.8. .8. Um, the only ones I had were 4.8, so that's not um, high tension enough because they obviously need to be torqued to a specific setting. So I've got these ones uh, from tool station which are 8.8. .8 and they are high tensile treated bolts or whatever it's called. So uh, I can use those, that's good. Right, that's my water pump repaired. Again, I put a smear of uh, gasket sealant on both sides of the gasket. Uh, so now it's time to, so now it's time to offer it up to the engine and put some bolts in and hope for the best. Well now, 
Fitting that water pump was a complete nightmare, so you have no video of me because it was essentially me screaming and swearing and shouting. However, it is now in, thank goodness, and looks beautiful. Let's hope it doesn't leak. Uh, next job now is then to connect up uh, some of the piping. So starting with uh, the new solid line that goes under there in the front of the engine. Just need to create a little bit of hose that goes from the water pump to the new kind of front pipe on the engine. Um, you can buy them from a specialist company, but it's like £15 pounds or something. It's only about, I don't know, 10 centimetres long. So I'm hoping that this little bit of the um, Frankenstein pipe, which is still soft and pliable, um, can be cut off and uh, will work. Yep, that looks like it should do the job. They practically touch these two, the water pump and this pipe, so it is just enough to go on there and get a Jubilee clip on both sides. Perfect. So at the end of the last video I took my uh, two radiators, the correct one for the car and the Mark II one, to Anglia Radiators uh, in Cambridge and they said that they would be able to recore it, though they would certainly try. Anyway, next day they called me and said no they couldn't recore it uh, for some reason, not sure why, um, but they said they had actually found on their shelf a correct Mark I Fiesta original uh, radiator with the kind of brass core so it's nice and black. So that looks much more standard. I'm really happy with it. Look, it's got the correct um, fittings on this side with the uh, expansion cap and the uh, expansion tank little nubbin. So I can get that fitted now, woo! -hoo! Okay, next job is I'm just transferring the old clips for the um, fan and fitting clips off the old radiator onto the new one. So I'll put them on there and wherever they need to be. There you go, just screwing in place the bolts that hold the fan onto the radiator. Hey, let's get this radiator into the car as well. Oh, now we are kicking. We have a radiator in place. Just need to get the uh, hoses on, top hose and the bottom hose, and expansion tank in place, and electrical connector onto the fan, and then we're pretty much done. I have ordered uh, these new these heater pipes, which obviously clip onto there like that. Um, I've ordered a new pair of them, inlet and outlet, because um, they've really, this is really, really hard and crunchy. And this one here has got a split in it by my finger there. So um, I've ordered some replacements of those. They're very expensive, but worth it. I don't want like a burst heater hose. So um, I'm not connecting that, that one up for now, um, but I will connect the bottom hose. And as if by magic of television, I think it might be what's happening next on your screen. And there we go. Beautiful, clean uh, expansion tank. Uh, I do owe Oliver a thanks for that. He does like cleaning things. He has scrubbed that completely clean. And then we have a lovely new bottom radiator hose, lovely new top radiator hose, and new clips on everything. So that is it for this video. There is just one more thing to do on the cooling system. Well, two more things, uh, which is uh, those pipes, uh, the heater pipes I've ordered, they're on their way, hopefully in the next couple of days. And then I can just fit those. And once they are fitted, I can top it up with cool or fill it with coolant. Because otherwise, uh, if I filled it now, it would obviously just pour out of uh, where the heat hoses are supposed to go. So that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope uh, that you have enjoyed seeing a little bit of progress on the Mark 1 Fiesta. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode where hopefully I will be starting to tackle the fuel system. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel, it really means a lot to me, uh, and like the video as usual if you wouldn't mind. I will see you in the next one. Bye!